Welcome back to virtual reality. My name is Thomas and you are watching Voodoo DE VR. Today we will check out the DPVR E3 4K headset. It has a 4K display and I got it in the gaming combo with the Nolo kit. That means it can be tracked in the room and it's also compatible to Steam VR. We will also check out comfort display and all the stuff that's important. Yeah, you can find everything about VR and AR on this channel thanks to my sponsors Woodgoes VR, Opa Money Events, Nursing Skills, Andy Defelzer VR Ambassador and Alpha Blend Interactive. Let's have some fun with the video and let's go! Okay, let's first do a quick unboxing of the DP VR. Uh, yeah, it looks pretty good here. It's a very huge and heavy package. And it says DPVR 4K gaming combo. And you can see here there is the Nolo kit included, and it also says CVR compatible. On the other side, it says VR gaming, 3D, 360 movie, fitness, family entertainment. And here it says immersive VR, head tracking, and hand tracking. So let's open this box. Here we go. And here's the headset. I will put it on the side for now. Um, so I will show you the rest first. So the package feels very cheap to be honest. Feels very cheap. And we have the whole... Everything what's included here is the Nolo kit. So I can show it to you here. So we have the main unit. This is like the... Oh, I, I just switched it on. It, it vibrates. Um, it's like the HTC Vive Lighthouse or Valve Index Lighthouse Station. You put it in front of you and then the, the unit you mount on the headset itself, it tracks the headset in the room and then the two controllers that are all also uh, tracked with six degrees of freedom. You have this little uh, sensor unit here and it, it's registered via the base station and then you have the trigger and touchpad and all this stuff. But I already made a video about the Nolo kit on my channel, so this is not so important for now. You know the Nolo kit, it's uh, pretty old, you can um, buy it alone, stand alone. And here we have some more stuff, like the power unit for the Nolo kit, and then we have the hand straps, and then we have a cable to charge the Nolo kit. Uh, it has a micro USB, you can connect it to the power unit or to your PC, wherever you like. And then we have cleaning cloth for the lenses, a little start guide, or this, I uh, know, I think it's the warranty card. Yeah, it's a warranty card. And uh, then we have a little um, strap that we can mount on the, on the headset. And uh, that I will show you now. So we have a pretty long cable here, as it seems, and we have four cables here. So the first one is USB power for the headset, the second one is USB data, the third one is USB for the Nolo kit, and the fourth is the HDMI cable for the video signal to the headset. And everything goes into this headset here, and um, it doesn't have included sound, so we have an audio jack here, and we have the micro USB where you mount the Nolo kit on the on the front here of, of this headset. So this is how it looks. It, it's a silver front and um, to be, I must be honest here, when I, when I check it out, it feels ultra cheap. It feels very cheap. The material, it feels like it would cost 10 bucks or something like that. I'm sorry to say that, but it's true. It feels very cheap, but it's not, it's okay. I mean, if it works and it's very light, then it's not a problem for me. So, uh, yeah, we have the straps here and we can put this thing here uh, at the back and you can check out the lenses here. They are pretty small. We have 110 degree feet of view. We can also remove this unit here if we like and yeah, there's nothing special about this. I will show this in the in the review now, um, how it feels, uh, if, if it's front heavy or it's, if the comfort is good, how is the picture quality, what can we do with that and all the things. So yeah, that was the little unboxing. Um, as I said, it feels, it feels very cheap, but we will check it out 
if the experience is cheap as well or very good. So let's check it out. Let's talk a little bit about the design. So we have this plastic front here, it's gray. It doesn't show any fingerprints and it says DPVR 4K. And what I really like is that it's pretty light. It's, it's a weight of 466 gram without a NOLO kit and that's not too much. This is fine. The cable is also long enough. It's five meters long. So this is nothing to complain about. But let's check out the comfort. And this one, this is so bad. I, I have to use the widest setting here so that, it, that, that I can even wear it. And now I, I have it on my head here. I can't even pull it more down. And I see my whole room here. There's so much space here. I, you, I can even see you now here. It's crazy. It's so bad. I, <laughs> even if I wear it like a, like a baseball cap only here on my, like a crown. And then I can even see everything here. It's so disturbing and it's so uncomfortable. Oh my God. It's so uncomfortable. It only sits on your head here. You can see all the, the red stuff here on my, on my head. It, it's so uncomfortable. So this is the most uncomfortable headset I ever tried. So the weight is awesome. The length of the cable is awesome, but the comfort is absolutely bad. So does this headset overheat? So for example, for the Valve Index, sometimes I have the feeling that it's getting very hot at the front, but this thing not, the, the DPVR 4K doesn't get hot and uh, I can play pretty long with that, what heat belongs, not what comfort belongs. So <laughs> the positive on the bad thing is, uh, for the comfort that there's a lot of air coming inside and I, I don't sweat with this. But I think we shouldn't talk about it because the comfort just sucks. We have to be honest here. So for people that want to um, remove the, in the face cover, you can, you can remove it here if you like, or you can also remove the, the whole thing here. You can, but <laughs> don't do that. Don't remove the whole uh, thing because uh, it's tricky to get it inside again. Um, for people that wearing glasses, this is not a good idea. So I had problems when, for my glasses that, that are hanging around here and then pushing your glasses into your head. That wasn't very comfortable. Everything about this headset is uncomfortable. I, I have to tell you that. For the connections, there are nearly no connections. There's only the audio jack because this headset has no integrated audio. You have to use the audio jack. There is a USB, mi micro USB cable for the NOLO kit, but this is just, <laughs> this is just here on this cable. This is not integrated in the headset. Um, that's it, what, what I can tell you. And if you see here, there is no IPD slider. That means you cannot change the IPD the distance to your pupils automatically. That doesn't work and not manually, not automatically, it just doesn't work. So for people that have a lower IPD than 60 or higher than 70, this is gonna be a very big problem. Even people with 60 or 70 sometimes see problems with that. I have 60, I don't see problems with this headset, what IPD belongs, but if you have 58 or 72, then this could be a problem. I cannot talk about the sound because this has no sound, that's it. Um, from the compatibility to any VR equipment, this does not work. You cannot connect any controllers, um, like, uh, any trackers, I, I mean, like the Vive trackers or the Knuckles controllers, the Valve Index controllers. It doesn't work because it has no tracking without the NOLO kit. But even with the NOLO kit, you have, of course, to use the NOLO um, controllers. Yeah, then. Let's talk about the mobility of this headset. As this only has three degrees of freedom, it doesn't need any trackers as long as you don't use the NOLO kit. You can bring it to your friends, just connect it to USB and HDMI and then you can just experience it. It's 
pretty mobile, I would say. But uh, yeah, for people that want to clean it, this is very flat surface. You can clean it very good. You can remove everything here, clean it. This, this is a good thing, doesn't make any problems. So that's it so far for these points. And uh, yeah, let's check out some other parts. Okay guys, so let's check out the setup of this thing here. Um, so first thing you have to do is of course connect um, USB and HDMI. So you need three USB ports, two for the headset and one for the Nolo kit and HDMI. And when you have connected this, it shows the green button here. It says E3 4K connected. So here, this is the DPVR assistance. You have to download this. You have to download this from the uh, web page from DPVR, then install it. Just click on go, go, go and ready and stuff. And then this thing here opens. It's like the Pi tool from Pimax. And here you can do a lot of stuff. You can see what, what headset is connected. You can see the serial number. You can see, uh, you can switch the brightness here. And of course, you can um, change the magnetometer calibration and you can upgrade the firmware. You have a small wizard here where you ca can uh, see how that works, but it's so easy, it's so easy. You can also play without the NOLO kit. Just click on disable NOLO. Of course, then you only have three degrees of freedom. Here you can see my base station is currently connected. It's just behind me here. And this one is on the headset. The controllers are switched off. They switch off after two minutes or something like this. And if you have everything connected here, then you can open Steam VR just like normal. And it will show the headset and the two controllers. It works, but how it works, I will show you now in the tracking test uh, with Rec Room. And after that, we will check out the display of this headset. Okay guys, and let's try out the tracking. Now I choose Rec Room because we have a mirror here and the tracking is ultra bad. It's very, very bad. You can see that uh, jumping around here. It, now my, my, my <laughs> right hand is, is jumping around here. Um, even if you calibrate, you can push the two buttons um, on the NOLO controllers to calibrate it. But even I pull the Three, uh, the controllers now from up to my feet and he doesn't go straight down he's going left down and this is a totally wrong position it doesn't work it's it's really bad for precision games you cannot play precision games with that really bad but that's what i already tested i tested the nolo cv1 kit separately some months ago and that was the same so i can absolutely not recommend this to play shooter games it's cool for using menus like here the laser pointer or like whatever we can uh, point and click but not for shooters by the way this is a uh, recording with the internal microphone of the DPVR. So I have no idea how that sounds. I can hear it later. <laughs> so we can talk about this later. So the tracking is very bad and the microphone we will see. So let's check out the display. So I compared the DPVR to the Pimax 8K. And as you can see, the DPVR looks pretty good here. This is a very high zoomed in picture of the game onward through the lens of the headset. And yes, I think the DPVR looks even a little bit better than the Pimax 8K here um, because it has a resolution of 3840 by 2160 at 75 Hertz. And perhaps we can say the colors are a little bit more washed out than with the Pimax 8K, but I would say it's, it's fine, it's really good. When we check out another picture here, that is the sub-pixel test, and you don't see any screen door effect. So for the, for the red areas here with the OLED displays, you have 
the problem that you see that the single dots, the single pixels. And but, but with this one, it has LC display. Um, you don't see the screen door effect. You you don't see that. It's it's very sharp. I have to say that. And now let's check out text. So um, the text looks good. Okay, it looks sharp. I I was uh, one meter away from the virtual text and it's totally readable, it's very good. But in this case, we have to talk about the sweet spot here and the sweet spot is not good. You can see that, uh, for example, here, here in the outer areas of this picture on the other side as well, um, it, it's not so good. So you have to find the right spot with the headset to see clear. So everything else is not really sharp and this is a big problem. Let's check out the black levels and glare tests. So for the black levels, we have an LC display here. That means the black levels are like, like this here. It's not black, it's grayish. It's not deep black. Of course, we know that from every other LC display as well. For the um, God rays with the glare test here, it's pretty good. They they don't have so much um, god rays here, so many god rays. Um, it, I mean, it's you can see it a little bit, but it's not as bad as with the Valve Index, for example. I could totally ignore that. It's it's totally fine. But even here, you can see the problem with the sweet spot. So here there are the colors. That that looks strange, and this is also a problem with the set set. Here I measured the um, field of view. So the vertical field of view is 94 degree and the horizontal field of view is 82 degree. And to be honest, this is very, it feels very small. It, they say they have 110 degree and diagonal of course. And um, when I compare to the Vive or the Rift, I would say this is this is smaller, but this is a problem with the comfort. With the it, it sits so bad on your head. It doesn't feel good. It just doesn't feel good. And this is another problem of this headset. So let's talk about the hardware recommendations. So this is the official web page from the, the DPVR E3 4K, and this is what they recommend. So they say i5 4590 or FX8250 with GTX 970 or R9290. I can definitely not recommend this. <laughs> um, I mean, I have a high end PC with a 9900K and 2080 Ti. I played some games like Project Cars and stuff and flight simulators. And I cannot tell you that this is what I recommend. Of course, if you only want to watch movies with that, that it, you should even have a better PC for that than what's listed here. And I would say have minimum um, Intel 6700K with a, 20, with a 1080 Ti, I would say. Then you can play good with, with this headset. But don't use this to play with the E3 4K. Okay, so let's talk about this headset. We've seen a lot of stuff now and let's check out how we can get this headset. So the problem is it's for the Chinese market. So you have to import it, even if you live in the United States. The price for this headset is 333 euro. I would say around $380 or whatever with the gaming combo, with the Nolo kit, this one here. So, I, I said a lot of bad things about this headset, but for this price, 333 euro, this is a good thing to be honest, because it has a very high resolution. I mean, the comfort totally sucks. I, for, for my head at least, perhaps other people are fine with that, but I, couldn't play longer than one hour with that. Um, the comfort sucks, the tracking is even worse. So the, the two controllers just 
throw them out of the window. They are so bad. You can use them, for example, in Project Cast to, to point and click on some menu uh, items, but don't use them. Never ever use this combo for playing onward or shooters or something that needs precision. It won't work. Don't play Half-Life Alex with that. <laughs> for people that don't have much money, this is a good simulation headset. You can play flight simulations, racing simulations and watch movies with that. For watching movies, you can use the um, integrated software. There, there's a little player where you can inter integrate uh, AVI files or MK, MKV files or whatever stuff. You, or you can use software like Virtual Desktop on Steam VR. It works. It works good. It, the display is good. I have to tell you that. So if you get that for 333 euro, you are totally fine. This is awesome and I totally um, recommend this if you get this for the price. Um, I think that's all I wanted to say. In, in comparison to, if you want the best simulation headset, if you don't care about tracking, then perhaps get the HP Reverb. It's better in all aspects, but it's of course much um, more expensive. If you want a bigger feed of you, get the Pimax headset. And if you will, if you want the best all around, all around solution, get the Valve Index. But this one is fine for movies, racing simulation. If you want to play a uh, racing simulations or flight simulations with tracking, with head tracking, don't use the controllers. <laughs> Just place the Nolo base stations in front of you and then your, uh, your headset is tracked pretty good. You can play with that uh, seated and don't use the controller. <laughs> then you can have your HOTAS or your racing wheel. That's fine. It's totally fine. So guys, if you want to buy that, it's a little bit tricky. Write an email to this here, service at dpvr. Dot cn and then you will get an invoice. You can pay it via PayPal, I think, and then they will send it to you. They will import it for you without um, additional cost. And I will put the link to this website into the description below. I hope you liked the small review. <laughs> and um, if yes, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And if you want to support me, just buy all your Amazon stuff via my link. That's uh, listed in the description below or just support me via Patreon. You will get behind the scenes videos. Thank you for watching and see you next time in virtual reality. See ya!